Hello, it's Darren at Moonhair Studio, and today we're going to look at fader sensitivity and fader calibration. What do they actually do, and what does that look like in practice? <laughs> So the first thing we're going to look at is the touch sensitivity of the actual faders themselves. So this is not the speed that they travel when tracking the mixer on your door, but this is the pressure you need to exert on one of these faders to actually make it activate and control your door. So I've got my unit powered off. We're going to turn it on, but we're going to hold down the record arm button on channel eight and then turn it on. And that brings you up this screen. Most important number is this one here. This is the actual sensitivity of your fader bank and it varies from zero through to 50. 50 being the least sensitive and zero being the most sensitive. Now it may seem that I've got this set rather low at, at eight, but actually there's only a, a certain range where the faders will actually activate your door anyway. And if you go past that, it's actually going to be completely useless. Now, if I want to adjust this number, then you hit the either the solo button or the mute button to toggle up and down. Now, if we tap this down to zero, you'll notice that all of the blue indicator lights have come on along the bank here. And that indicates that every single fader is so sensitive now, it thinks it's being operated. So it's almost like we're pressing down on all of them at, at once. Um, just knock it up slightly to one and we start to see some of them flickering on and off um, still sensitive thinking that they're being operated and as you move back up um, then you know there's the occasional flicker um, and then eventually they go out and so that sort of eight mark um, or around about that seems to be quite a good um, thing to aim for you possibly could go a little lower than that so what happens if we go the other direction so we take this up a long way you know saying to around about 30 or something like that well now when i press on a fader the blue lights don't come on unless i'm pressing down on two but it doesn't seem to matter how hard you press on a single channel once you get to that level it doesn't operate but if you press down more than one, sometimes you can get the lights to come on. Um, so what's going on here? Uh, let's have a look at this row of numbers along the bottom here, which are all roughly the same and seem to be indicating the actual sensitivity of the faders themselves. If you press record arm again, it goes into an almost live mode so um, as you press on a fader you can see that this the number goes up so the harder i press the larger the number so is this indicating the same sensitivity that we're registering up here possibly but something that i've noticed is that if you press two faders down you can get that number to go much higher and once you start to press down a good number of them you can actually start to get into the 40s and you know sort of quite high numbers there so perhaps the bed itself um, almost is sensing a cumulative pressure on these faders, but a single fader operation is just not doing it. So my advice to you is to keep this number around about the sort of um, five to eight mark, something like that, and just adjust it to your own um, feel that, you know you are actually getting a, a good response from your door while you're using it to save the setting it's as simple as turning the unit off and then that will come back on at the level that you've set it so we'll leave it at eight and we'll turn it off so at normal sensitivity we've got um, pretty good control over the faders um, not feeling any resistance or, or difficulty in moving those around so so that's good and they're being replicated on the screen but notice how if, if 
I move the fader like that, it doesn't pick it up. <laughs> so you must be up pushing on it. Let's have a quick look at these faders at zero sensitivity. Right, so the first thing I notice, as well as all of the blue lights being on, is that we've got a ghost in the machine. I mean, it's just randomly selecting channels. Um, and you will notice actually some uh, movement of some of the faders in the door. So it's thinking that I'm touching the faders. I mean, yeah. I can still use the faders, but obviously this is no good. And my camera's gone wrong as well. I can't actually blame that on the Qcon, I don't think. But right, let's let's just forget this. Zero is awful. Right, so I've now set it at 50 and um it's just nothing happening. Um, it's not registering at all. What if I press load down at the same time? Yeah. So you can get, you can force them, but I also feel it feels a bit sticky at times. Um, of course, if you move them on the screen, the actual physical faders themselves are moving, so it's, it's still connected. It's just it's. It's just not sensitive enough. So you've got to find the, gr the sort of middle ground, really, the, the point at which you're feeling comfortable with the way that your faders are reacting to your door. Now let's talk about fader calibration and why you may need to do that. Um, sometimes if your faders are moving too quickly or too slowly, you might need to calibrate them. Also, if they're making a lot of noise then it may be that you've got it set um, too slow um, other things that I could think of maybe if the fader isn't actually moving to an accurate location to represent what you're seeing on screen all these things could be to do with fader calibration now this is not um, massively scientific I'm going to just experiment with a few um, settings but to get into fader calibration you turn on uh, your machine while you're holding down the record arm of channel 2 in this instance, not channel 8. So let's just let that do its thing. And you can see I've got mine all set to 165. If you're operating a QCOM Pro X, the range is between 110 and 220, I believe. If you're on a G2, it's slightly different. I think it goes from 135 to 175. So just bear that in mind that the operation that I'm doing is for the Pro X but it's the same basic methodology. So to change your calibration it's as simple as turning the pan pot so I'm going to adjust these down so we'll go for uh, the bottom of the range on uh, the first two and then I'll um, I'll ramp up the next ones to the, the maximum and that will give us a little bit of a sort of control experiment of what all of this looks like when you've got it done so obviously if you're on a g2 those numbers would be um, slightly different that would be 135 and they'd be 175 um, if you need to adjust your master a fader obviously you don't have a rotary pot for that and you'd use your select buttons on channel seven and eight so that steps up and down so that's the way you would adjust that one when you've finished don't just turn it off otherwise you lose all your settings you have to click on uh, rotary pot eight then that will save your fader calibration and then it reboots your unit now the first thing that becomes obvious on boot up is that although on my door all of these should be in a straight line, these two are actually misaligned with the other faders. So this was the uh, channels that were set to 220, so the highest value, and these were set to the lowest value. They appear to be pretty much on track with the normal um, level that I've got them set at, but these two definitely are not. Um, and there is 
some um, advice online that says if your uh, device isn't moving to the correct position then you may need to reduce the value so we can see at that high value it's quite possible that this just isn't locking into where it should be so I've programmed in a little bit of automation to these first um, six channels of, of my buses um, because that way we've got the two that were calibrated at 110. We've got two at 220 and we've got a couple there that are just on my normal 165. Um, so we'll see what happens when we play through that. Okay, so these are running nice and smoothly. These are actually really clunky. They're really grindy. You can hear all the separate steps through them. So that's not great at all. Um, and these ones are just a little bit out of line because we can see on the screen quite clearly that this fader should actually be below the level of this one and this one is actually below the level of that one so not tracking as accurately so to sum up i'd say if your faders are not tracking accurately with your door then probably lower your fader calibration you're trying to find the sweet spot where everything seems to be working well if you go too low you're going to find that your motors are going to make a lot of noise as they track too slowly and you'll actually hear the steps um, as they're moving up and down so there is that sort of sweet spot and you'll just have to find that for yourself in your particular unit and remembering that the g2 is working on slightly different numbers but it's exactly the same principle um, I hope you've enjoyed that and a thumbs up is always appreciated uh, even if you're not interested in subscribing to the channel that's fine I, I don't ask that of people. The music of this um, particular section was a musical portrait of my friend Kevin, a uh, fellow biker who unfortunately did pass away during the course of making this video so um, I dedicate that to him and his memory and I'll see you on the next one.